Hello ladies and gentlemen, it's Mike here at Game for Scratch, and today we're talking about Material Maker, one of my favorite open source projects to talk about on this channel, and it is being talked about today because Material Maker 1.5 was just released this past weekend, it's been a long weekend, etc., so we're covering it a little bit late, but it's only been out for a day or two at this point in time. Now, one of the things about this release that's really impressive is that for an open source project, when you start moving beyond the primary creator, that is a good sign. And what we're going to find out about 1.5, this is Will's version. Yes, Will did a lot in the 1.5 release, which is very cool. That means we're probably going to see like a faster development cycle as you get more and more people working on a project. And if you can, contribute to this one. This is an amazing project. So what exactly is it? Well, you can think of it as probably the closest thing you think of is this is like a substance designer, but free and open source. What kind of materials can you make with this? Well, as you see here, these are the materials available that you can create directly from the website. Gives you an idea of how the process works. And uh, you got a number of things. By the way, a lot of people contributing uh, stuff to uh, the Material Maker library, you have very disturbing taste, and I applaud you for that. We have a lot of things like this, bandages covered in blood, or we have uh, sewn flesh. Um, the cool thing here is you also got the ability to actually do animated things. Like, for example, here, this one is an actual animated 3D texture. Let's load that one up and get an idea of what the whole process works like. Now, another thing that's cool about this whole thing is everything that you see is, uh, in fact, again, free, open source, ready to use. So if you want to use this texture, you can see right there, this 3D texture in action, look at that. Those animations all work with it. So you can then go ahead and export these out to your game engine of choice. What does that mean? Export material out. You have out-of-the-box exports for Godot, Unity, Unreal, or you can export it out just as PBR textures that you could use in Blender or wherever you want. But this is very much game engine ready. You an idea of the graph that's going together to create this. So there you can see this is the node network and it gets a, it gets a little sloppy at times. So there you can see everything that goes together to create this animated texture. At any point in time, by the way, you can click a particular node and see a preview of what that node will actually do. So come up here, for example, uh, we've got the blend. You can see the result of the blend down here. There is a gray score being applied to the decompose, to the untiling, to the buffer. So you can see a preview of everything that is going on at any particular stage. Um, and then otherwise you see various different pieces go together. It is a node driven system or setup. This is a very complex one. Let's go with something a little bit simpler to, to, to grok or to understand what's going on there. And let's go back to one of those gross ones. So here, see, like I said, there's a lot of really gross textures in here and we'll go with sewn flesh. So this is more of a straightforward texture. Once again, you can see the end result of it right here. And this is the node texture or the node network that goes together to create it. By the way, as you can see, you can create these groups of them that all work together. So all the little pieces that go in. This is obviously a very uh, complicated texture as well. But the nice thing here is you can go ahead and download these examples from the web and get going with them. On top of that, you'll also find over here, you go to load, and then if you go to the directory you're in, you're actually gonna find there's a number of examples here as well. So if you want something a lot simpler, here is bricks. There is a brick texture. This creates a static PBR material, and here you can see how it is actually created. So it starts off with a basket weave, like so. We could change that out to a herringbone. It's gonna break everything else because it's gonna expect something different, but you can see how easy it is from the starting zone and to the very end result, which is your PBR material in this particular case. So what exactly are we looking at in 1.5? Well, there's a lot of small changes. Another big thing that happened behind the scenes, I think in 1.4 was a move that this was developed using the Godot game engine. They moved from Godot 3 to Godot 4. So there was a lot of bug fixes that needed to happen, but there was also a lot of little improvements that were added across the board. What kind of improvements? Well, you see you've got your, your model over here. This could be a cylinder that you preview on or a sphere, for example. Well, now you've also got the ability, well, you've had this ability all along to do something custom, but in the custom, you will see in terms of file formats, there is now FBX. At the same time, uh, if you're dealing with uh, an image file like so, drop that in so your image source you now have the ability to use dds or direct draw surfaces very nice new stuff there uh, so just little improvements behind the scenes we also got a number of new nodes we're gonna go to the release notes in just a second but you got new things like this an sdf shape for kite so if you want to have a kite as your material uh, let's go ahead and see the preview of it over here. This is a base kite shape. Now you see you got apex, base, and width. Nice thing is you got these little 
interactive controls for handling how those all work together. You can handle them that way and this way and so on, or you can come down here and change it that way. So you've got a number of new nodes added in here as well. So that's it for the hands-on demonstration portion. Again, if you want to get in and really start learning this, probably your simplest progressions, come on in here, like install it. It's available for Windows, Mac, and Linux. Go to load, go to examples, and start with some of these because these are pretty simple. So if you want to create, again, create like a stone wall. There you go. There's how you can create a simple stone wall. And there is the node network that created it. Or, of course, you can see uh, up here under the materials from the website, things that the community have contributed. And there is an absolute ton of things, uh, including, once again, fully animated, cool 3D uh, shapes being created entirely like what you see there. So there's some uh, really complicated things you can work towards, but there's some really basic ones to start out with. Or if you're interested in just using the end results, you just download them from that example. And like I saw earlier on, just export them out here as materials, super simple. There's also some painting, which gives you sort of like a substance painter type thing, but that is, it's a little bit on the back burner right now. All right. So if you want to go ahead and check this one out, you go ahead on over here to materialmaker.org. Uh, they just released 1.5 as we were talking about here. Being an idea, again, a node based creates PBR materials. There is that giant community library you can check out. Uh, texture painting tools, once again, those are a little bit on the back burner right now. Uh, so you can see if you go into the download now, you will find the download now link here. You click that and then you pick the version you want. Windows, Linux, or Mac. Uh, if you don't want to donate or anything, you don't have to. And you see straight up downloads like this. If you want to know what's new in 1.5, like I said, this is the Will version. Uh, by the way, another thing to note about this upcoming release uh, is that Material Maker is going to be available on Steam. Uh, so it's wish listable now, but they're going to be uh, uploading it up to Steam later on. I actually find dev tools on Steam really annoying uh, because you can only run Steam on one PC at a time per account. Uh, but if that's not an issue for you, uh, it's a lot easier to get things through Steam. You get automatic updates, etc. cetera. Uh, so if you want, you'll be able to download it at Steam in the future. And in terms of what has been added in this release, well, like I said, this is the Will version. So behind the scenes, the primary author uh, has been doing a lot of bug fixes since the Godot 4 port. Uh, but in terms of new features, I got a ton of new things. The highlight ones, again, things like DDS images and FBX meshes can be loaded now. Uh, the command line is back, so you can use the command line to do a about, uh, like bulk exports of materials, etc. That is always useful, especially if you're slotting a tool like this into your pipeline and you want to do some kind of automation. Uh, updated color picker, pen tablet driver on Windows, uh, the Mac icon got updated. So it's funny, this guy is doing platform changes for Mac and Windows in this release. Again, you're going to find Will did a lot of things here. And then some cool stuff here, like uh, lasso selection, alt left mouse button. So let's go ahead and see that in action. So I go alt left mouse button and I can do a lasso selection around those particular nodes. Really cool quality of life stuff that he has contributed. Um, input swapping, so on, cleanups to the library panel, cleanups to the 2D preview and 3D pre pre um, preview panels uh, across the board. And also improvements to the themes, uh, performance improvements, and then we got a number of new nodes here, including the kite that we saw earlier on, a directional warp, uh, syn uh, symmetric nearest neighbor filter, a bunch of new nodes basically there, and a bunch of updates to existing nodes. And what you're going to see once again is Will is very active. And I hope Will sticks around because, again, more contributors, uh, better uh, development cycle, more stuff in the new version, and so on. So a very cool release, and it wasn't all Rodzilla this time. Will is definitely the star of Material Maker 1.5. By the way, once again, this is an open source project. Uh, it is under the MIT license. Uh, if you like what he's doing here, do drop him a star uh, or support them on Patreon as well. Again, you see there are a number of contributors now, uh, including now this guy who basically did, <laughs> oops, hiccup, sorry, did this release more or less himself. As you can see, it's created using Godot and primarily using GDScript. And now that I am having the hiccups, I'm going to end this video. So again, if you want to go ahead and check this one out, it is available at materialmaker.org and it is awesome, free, cross-platform, and great for creating textures. If you have never checked out Material Maker before, I highly recommend you do so now. All right, that's it. Let me know what you think. Comments down below. I will talk to you all later. Goodbye.